Disney. Our story this week is about the quarter horse. Speed, strength, and cow sense are his trademarks. He began the all-purpose horse of the settlers in Virginia and the Carolinas. When the first thoroughbred horse came to America, he found a quarter horse there before him. The settlers rode and drove the quarter horse during the week and raced him a quarter of a mile on Sundays and holidays. His great speed at this distance gave him his name. The quarter horse went west with the settlers. He worked his way by herding cattle. the mail and even unwittingly helped many a bank and train robber make a fast getaway although his blood has mixed along the way with that of the mustang and thoroughbred there have been certain breeders in the southwest with vision enough to preserve his unique type and abilities these breeders have made the quarter horse what he is today the most versatile horse in the world. In looking for someone to narrate our story, we could think of no one better than Rex Allen. Rex was born and reared in the cattle country of Arizona, and he's known, owned, and admired quarter horses all his life. And in helping to create our story for you, Rex plays the role of an Arizona rancher, a role in which he is completely at home. It has a horse, has a tack room, a place where they keep bridles and saddles and all the rest in one place. As you can see, mine sort of got out of hand here in the last few years because I've always been interested in the history of the Southwest as seen through the equipment of its horsemen. And these saddles can tell us a lot. This one is one of the oldest. It was ridden by an old Mexican caballero many, many years ago, long before the Southwest was even a part of the United States. Now there's quite a change between then and now, the horses and saddles are both better now. The quarter horse was good to begin with, but he's even better now. In the story I'm about to tell you, you'll visit some of the most famous ranches in the Southwest, ranches that wrote quarter horse history. And you'll see what the cowboy and his horse are like today. Now here on the wall, we have pictures of two great quarter horse stallions that have to do with our story. Now this is Driftwood. His colts have carried a lot of good ropers to the rodeo pay window. And here's Carly Knob, a sire from the famous King Ranch in Texas. He carries a lot of the blood of Old Sar, which is the foundation sire for all the King Ranch quarter horses. Now our story concerns a certain quarter horse mare and her owner, a girl named Elena Vasquez from an old California ranching family. It all started when Elena discovered something I didn't know that I had a mare and a filly who were the last of a great line of quarter horses started by her grandfather many years ago. <laughs> she sure wanted to buy that mare. And I was just as sure I didn't want to sell her. And one day Elena came to Arizona to my ranch. And even though she knew that mare wasn't for sale, she just had to see her anyway. Bring him on in, Joe. Tell me the mare, will you sell me the filly? <laughs> You've got me in a kind of an embarrassing position, Miss Vasquez. I know you'd like to have the bloodline back in the family, but to tell you the truth, I've started a little breeding program about a year ago, and that mare is the most important part of it. I may have quite a little of that stock around in a few years. Why don't you come back and take a look then? Well, it looks like your mind's made up. It is. I hate to disappoint you all together. We're working some cattle over in the Mesquite Corral. Would you like to step on a horse and help us a little while? I'd love to. Come on.
step rover. How'd you like to try one outside on old Red? All right, fine. soft spot in me, but I'm going to let you have that filly. Do you mean it? We'll wean her in about six months, and I'll ship her out to you. You'll never regret it. <laughs> Elena couldn't wait the six months before I shipped the filly to her. She had to start right in gentling her and getting acquainted. And she gave her a name, too. The Bay Lady. And then when things were worked out to everybody's satisfaction, something happened to change it all. This mare that I had such high hopes for was found one morning dying. There was no warning, nothing. She was gone before anyone could help her. And Elena's filly was an orphan. two colts, so we hoped she would accept the orphan. But she wanted nothing to do with the little bay lady. Then luck and looking brought us a lame old work mare that had lost her colt. After her other experience, the youngin was kind of cautious. We tied the mare to the fence, and loneliness and a little hunger made the filly braver. Our problem was solved when the old mare took her on as if she'd been waiting for her. Philly happily followed her new mother, an old mare who was worthless to everybody except the little bay lady. There was a new man working on this outlying part of the ranch, and he just figured the mare's colt was her own, and like the others, that they were of no breeding we wanted to keep.
If he hadn't gotten so fed up with fence fixing, things would have taken a different turn, and Elena Vasquez would have had her filly back in California. Sure to see you quit, George. Well, Abe, you're all through cattle work now, and I don't take much of this fence building. I think I better be on the road. I wish you'd stay a little while longer. I'm kind of short right now and uh, be in better shape to pay you. Well, isn't there something we could do so I could get on the way? The only thing I know, uh, I got this wiener filly here, and if you'd consider taking her for it, I owe you why. Be glad to let you have her. How's she bred, Abe? They tell me her mother's work, Ma, but I don't believe it. She looks too good. Well, let's take a look at her. All right. Her, Abe. I'll take her. Well, if she suits you and uh, if you think it'll settle it, why, it's a deal. Sixteen horses for his own use. And as the remuda is brought into camp, 
Each man sends a loop curling out with snake-like precision to rope the horse he wants. Every one of these quarter horses has been bred for a specialized ability called cow sense. What is cow sense? Well, maybe it can be described best by just watching this little Texas quarter horse named Jody Earl as he cuts a heifer from a herd. in a horse, it's sires like Pocahuano of the Wagner Ranch, who, like his own sire, King, is among the most famous modern-day quarter horses. His owner, E. Paul Wagner, carefully works out a breeding program for Pocahuano each year and turns him out in the spring with certain selected mares. It's no accident that Pocahuano is what he is. He's descended from Traveler, a fountainhead of great modern running quarter horses, and through him to an amazing horse named Xantanon, who left a legacy of incredible stamina, heart, speed, and cow sense, and to none of his line in larger quantity than he left to Pocahuano. And so, in this atmosphere of fine livestock breeding, some of the yearling Wagner mares welcomed the new cowboy's fleet to, to spend the next years just eating and growing. At the end of the two years, George had drifted back to Arizona. His filly was old enough to be ridden. And if anybody had been around to recognize it, she was beginning to show a certain quality of head and neck that was the stamp of her sire, the stallion Driftwood. This, and the way she moved under saddle, told George that he'd made the greatest bargain of his life when he took the filly on. Cattle make cow horses, that is, cattle, cowboys, and that inborn quarter horse trait called cow sense, which began to prove George's filly to be a natural. Alert and always interested, she began to know how a critter thinks. Anything he could do with cattle was fine with George, but when they put him to ride and fence, <laughs> he got that old urge to move on. While I was visiting around at a rodeo one day out behind the chutes, a bay mare caught my eye. I didn't give it much thought till she walked by again. to the boy that was on her and asked him how she was bred. That head and neck had made me look twice. It had driftwood written all over it. I had a hunch. Yep. Her teeth showed the right age and even the spot on her forehead matched. Then I went up into the grandstand to watch Harley May and his little quarter horse in the bulldogging. Harley's one of the country's top rodeo professionals. The calf roping came next, and I saw the boy on that bay mare go behind the barrier to get ready. That bay mare left the chute and caught her calf made me all the more sure my hunch was good. And I made up my mind I wouldn't leave the grounds that day without getting a real line on that mare. Since 
since I'd just barely met the bay mare's owner, I didn't know that he was one of those cowboys that can't let the dice alone. There are a few people that always seem to be lucky. George wasn't one of them. But this racehorse man had that kind of reputation. But George wasn't bothered. The next throw could always be a lucky one. He'd already lost his money, but there was always his saddle. Today, the galloping dominoes were passing for only one man. But with a true gambler's optimism, George was sure that if he could stay in the game long enough, he could beat the odds. The stakes were getting higher. But as long as he was in the hole this far, he figured he might as well stay in for everything he was worth. And he was worth exactly one bay mare. take long. The racehorse man had a new mare that looked like she had some speed in it. After the rodeo, I looked up the cowboy because I wanted to keep tabs on that mare until Elena could see her. But I was one dice game too late. Now, wait a minute, Elena. It may not be the Bay Lady, but it sure could be. Yes, all the information I can get seems to fit her. And the man that won her, yes. Well, he's a horse race man, and I understand he's gonna run her Sonoita this weekend. And if I don't miss my guess, he'll run her in a claiming race. I think it'd be worth your trip to drive over here and take a look at her yourself. got his name because of his speed at a quarter mile. At this little country track for quarter racing, the Bay Mare's new owner figured he'd clean up by entering her in a cheap claiming race. He was gambling again. He was sure there'd be nobody there interested enough to put in a claim for her this first time out. But today, for him, the odds fell the other way. When Elena arrived at the track, she went right to the paddock. With a horseman's instinctive eyes, she singled out the bay mare right away. And she scanned her carefully for signs of the breeding she knew so well. The horses were on their way to the starting gate. And there was just enough time to put in a claim.
back in California, riding the old familiar coastline of her ranch, Elena found herself better mounted than she had ever been before. Working the cattle had never been so easy as it was now on the Bay Lady. Because it was the Bay Lady. The American Quarter Horse Association had helped Elena and me retrace the mare's trail until there was no doubt of her identity. She was concerned, his name was Jimmy Williams. departure from traditional methods of western horse breaking, the bay lady needed relaxing from her previous training and even the little racing she'd had. So he started her like she was a beginner. He drove her in a breaking cart. This set her head position and with the weight of the cart gave her balance and movement, particularly in leading with the inside foot as she circled either to the right or to the left. the Bay Lady. An audience of curious yearlings watched the Bay Lady's education, not realizing that they were getting a glimpse into their own future. By the time the Bay Lady had finished her training, she was a living example of every horseman's dream. She could do everything she'd been taught with just a shoestring in her mouth. got a chance to prove her natural ability and training. There she defeated all comers of all breeds to become a champion reined horse. But the life of a quarter horse doesn't begin and end on the racetrack or in the show ring. Like her colonial ancestors, the Bay Lady continued to work for her living. It was to fulfill the destiny Elena had planned for. She was to be bred great King Ranch of Texas. 
It's here under the ownership of the Clayburg family, and Mr. Robert Clayburg in particular, that many successful experiments in livestock breeding have been made which have commanded respect and admiration throughout the world. It's to the King Ranch that the quarter horse owes much of its present quality. As Mr. Robert Clayburg has said, while the art of breeding requires intense application to detail, endless study, observation, and application of a keen artistic sense, the rewards are great, and I know of no task of such consuming and lasting interest. In the early days, the lean flanked longhorns were the cattle of the King Ranch ranges. travel all day, but they didn't take much beef to market. There was a need for something better. Santa Gertrudis, name of the King Ranch headquarters, was proudly given to a new breed of cattle designed to meet the rugged demands of the South Texas climate. The blood of the English shorthorn and the East Indian Bramer were mingled to produce an animal immune to the dread tick fever and a fine beef type. don't just grow. It always takes men on horseback to work them. Like the horses they ride, these men are born and bred to the work they do. From father to son, the traditions of horsemanship and equipment are handed down. Tools of their trade, to be honored and used with skill and care. Proud of working on the King Ranch, these men call themselves Quinenos. When a man cares about his cattle, you can pretty near bet he cares as much or more about his horses. On the King Ranch, along with the Santa Gertrudis, a new type quarter horse came forward. Finer, keener, and bred with more of an eye to quality than those before him. Noontime is dinner time in Texas. Even in a cow camp, the big meal is in the middle of the day. Good beef seasoned by the smoke of the mesquite wood fire. Beans with a flavor borrowed from across the border. And sourdough camp bread. These stick to a cowboy's ribs just as good today as they did on the old Chisholm Trail. was the day the Bay Lady was to arrive at the King Ranch. She was to be bred to hired hands Cardinal. Richard Clayburg, who supervises the quarter horse breeding operations, had seen the Bay Lady and watched her work. That was enough to bring into being a rare exception to the rule, that no outside mares are bred to King Ranch horses. Two vaqueros were sent to round up Cardinal with his band of mares. To assemble a band of mares like this is a lifetime's work, and they show the success of the program. They have uniformity and type, and their foals are proof of Cardinal's worth as a sire. This band of mares runs with Cardinal, chosen especially for him. Mares are selected with equal care for each of the other King Ranch stallions. What stallions are bred to what mares cannot be a matter of memory on a ranch of such dimensions. It's a matter of supervised record. This is how they do it. Before each mare is turned out in the spring, Dr. Northway, the King Ranch veterinarian, checks her identification brands. On the right, the running W signifies the mare's sire, Wimpy. On the left, the P is for her dam sire, Peppy. Dr. Northway places her breeding sheet in a book where the mares going to each stallion are recorded. As the Bay Lady was not a King Ranch mare, the stallion was to be brought to her. When she arrived, Richard Clayburg wanted his Uncle Robert to see her work, and Elena's foreman was glad to have the chance to show her off.
Cardinal was brought in to meet the Bay Lady. Elena's plan to carry on her grandfather's dream was about to become real. Elena had turned the Bay Lady out in one of the mountain pastures to await the birth of her colt. They had figured through past experience that the heavy winter weather would be gone and the feed was good there too. But the Bay Lady's life had been molded by the unexpected and this time was to be no exception. A freak storm came blasting down out of the northwest. All the other brood mares had been brought down into the lower pastures, but the Bay Lady was not among them. When her time was due, evidently she had left the herd looking for a more isolated spot to have her colt. Elena knew there were no roads into the back canyons of those high pastures, and the snow on the trails would be too deep for horses. The only way to spot the Bay Lady would be by helicopter. Like many another rancher, Elena knew from experience that helicopter pilots can generally open up any area, no matter how tough or impassable. she wouldn't likely be too far away. But the big hazard was flying in among the trees to try and spot her. And there they were, the Bay Lady and her first coat. They looked all right, too, except the mare stood like she had her foot caught in something under the snow. And when an animal is helpless, it doesn't take long for varmints to find out about it. of a buried branch that wedged her foot. she was all ready to go. But maybe what was about to happen to her wasn't exactly what she had in mind.
sure to have that filly over the hill to one of the ranch line camps in a matter of minutes. But Elena and the Bay Lady were just going to have to slog it out by themselves. surprise to Elena that the mare and the filly came through the rough going in such good shape. It's what you'd expect from this kind of breeding. In all quarter horse history, there have been certain great individuals like the Bay Lady who have tested and expanded the limits of past performance. Elena had made up her mind that this filly belonged to me, but I felt she deserved to keep this special little snowbird. The quarter horse has come a long way since the early days. What new greatness lies ahead is the kind of a challenge that'll be joyfully and willingly met by those like Elena and the Bay Lady. Next on DVT, the latest in News Brief.